In this video, we're going to learn about tuples and how to use them in Python. So tuples are a built-in type in Python. They allow us to store a fixed number of objects. So for example, we could have a tuple to store shape strings. We could have here shapes is equal to, and we'll have open bracket and then triangle, comma, rectangle, and then comma, circle. And this tuple here stores three strings, triangle, rectangle, and circle. We could output the tuple with print and shapes. We'll save our program and try it out. And we'll see here, we get the tuple triangle, rectangle, and circle. So the tuple stores three string items, triangle, rectangle, and circle. And the tuple stores these items in an ordered way. So triangle is at the index zero, and rectangle is at the index one, and circle is at the index two. And we can use these indexes to access the tuple items. So for example, we could print here, shapes at the index one. That's going to be rectangle here. We could save our program and try it out. And we'll get rectangle here. Now, unlike lists, tuples are immutable. What that means is we can't add new items to the tuple. We can't remove items from the tuple and we can't modify which objects the tuple is storing. So for example, we can't assign to the index one and change this item here. I can't have shapes at the index one is equal to let's say square. If we try to run this program, we'll get an error here it says tuple object does not support item assignment. So we can't change which objects a tuple stores. We can get the length of a tuple, which is the number of items in the tuple using the function len. So for example, we could call len and we could pass it shapes. And this function should return three for this tuple. We'll output this with print length colon and we'll output the return value of calling the function with shapes. We'll save this and run a program, and we do get a length of three. Now tuples can store the same value multiple times. So this tuple here could store the string circle here and here, and that's okay. We can use the in operator to check if a value is in a tuple. So for example, down here, we could have if, circle is in shapes, then we'll output here, circle is in shapes. We could save this and try it out. And we'll get that circle is in shapes. We can also use not in. So for example, we could have here, if apple not in shapes, then we'll output here, apple is not in shapes and it's not. So if we save the program and try it out, we'll get apple is not in shapes. We can use a for loop to loop through the items in the tuple in order. So for example, we could have for shape in shapes. And this loop body is going to run for each item in the tuple. And each time it does, shape is going to be set to the next item in the tuple circle, rectangle, and then circle. And each time this loop body runs, we'll output here shape. We'll have print shape. If we save the program and try it out, we'll get here circle, rectangle, circle. We could also make a loop which uses the tuple indexes. So for example, we could have for i in range and we'll have len shapes. So what's going to happen here is i is going to go from zero up until, but not including the length of the shapes tuple. So i is going to go from zero to one to two. And we can use i to access the tuple items. So here we could have print and shapes at the index i. If we save this and run it, we'll get circle, rectangle, circle as output from that for loop. Now tuples can store objects of different types. So for example, we could have a tuple here 
called mixed. And this tuple will store a string and a bool value and an integer value and a float value. We could output mixed and this is going to be okay. We'll save this and run it. And we'll get here string false two and 5.6. We can create a tuple with only one item, but we have to put a comma after that item. So for example, we could have one item is equal to, and we'll have the string item followed by a comma. And this here is going to be a tuple with one item. We could output the type of one item with print and type and one item. If we save the program and run it, we'll see that one item is a tuple. Now, when creating tuples, the brackets are actually optional, except for situations where it would be ambiguous if we didn't use brackets. So for example, we could create a tuple called multiple. And this tuple will have the items one, two, three, and four. And even though there's no brackets, this will create a tuple. We could output multiple with print and multiple. And if we save the program and run it, we'll get the tuple one, two, three, four. Now one situation where we do need brackets is when creating the empty tuple that has no items. So here we could have empty is equal to, and we'll have an empty tuple with open bracket, close bracket, and we could output empty with print and empty colon, and we'll output empty. We could output the type of empty with print, and we'll have type of empty. And if we save the program and run it, we'll see this is an empty tuple. So we do need brackets in that situation. Now, sometimes we may want to unpack the tuple and split the items of the tuple into different variables. So for example, let's say we have a tuple of different names. We could have here names is equal to, and we'll have Jim and Dwight and Pam. Then let's say we want to store the three strings in this tuple into three different variables. We could do that using tuple unpacking. We could have here person one comma, person two comma, person three comma is equal to names. And this is going to unpack the tuple where person one is going to store Jim, person two is going to store Dwight, and person three is going to store Pam. We could output person one, person two, and person three to confirm this. Here we'll have print, and we'll have person one colon, and we'll output person one. We'll also output person two. So we'll copy this and paste it, and we'll output person two, and we'll also output person three, and we'll save this and run our program. And we'll see that person one is Jim, person two is Dwight, and person three is Pam. And we've unpacked the tuple. We can also store some number of the tuple items into a list when unpacking the tuple. So for example, let's have a tuple of numbers. We'll have here numbers is equal to one, two, three, four, five. Then down here, we'll unpack the tuple with n1, n2, and then we'll have star rest is equal to numbers. So the way this is going to work is one is going to be unpacked into n1, and two is going to be unpacked into n2, but then three, four, and five are going to be unpacked as a list into rest. We could output n1, n2, and rest to confirm this. We'll have here print and n1 colon, and we'll output n1, we'll output n2, and we'll output rest as well with print and rest colon, and we'll output rest. We'll save this and run it, and we can see n1 is one, n2 is two, and rest is the list three, four, five. We can actually use this star operator in the middle of the comma separated variables. So for example, we could have here comma n3, and then we could output n3 down here. And what's going to happen is n1 is going to be set to one, and n2 is going to be set to two, and n3 here is going to be set to five. 
and the variable rest is going to be set to a list containing three and four. And if we save the program and run it, we'll see that N3 is set to five and rest is set to a list containing three and four and N1 and N2 are one and two. Now, one big use case for tuple unpacking is to have functions which return more than one value. So for example, let's make a simple function, woof here, def, and function. And this function is going to return a tuple. Woof here, return one, comma two, comma three. And this function is really only returning one object. That object is a tuple. But because tuples can store multiple objects, we can use tuples to return essentially more than one object from a function. So here we're returning the int objects one, two, and three. We could then unpack the tuple after calling it. So we could have here v1 comma v2 comma v3 is equal to, and we'll call the function. And when the function returns the tuple containing one, two, and three, we're going to unpack those objects into v1, v2, and v3. We could output v1, v2, and v3 to confirm this. So first we'll output v1, then we'll output v2, and finally we'll output v3. And we'll save this and run our program. And we'll see that v1 is one, v2 is two, and v3 is three as expected. Now we can also join tuples using the plus operator. So if we have a tuple, let's say first is equal to one and two, and second is equal to three and four, we can join these tuples using the plus operator. So we could have here joined is equal to first plus second. And what this is going to do is create a new tuple with the items one, two, and then three and four. We could output joined. Here we could have print and we'll have joined colon and we'll output joined and we'll save this and run our program. And we can see we do get the join tuple one, two, three, and four. We can also use the star operator to multiply a tuple. So for example, we could have here multi is equal to, and we'll have first times three. And this will essentially join together three first tuples. We could output multi to see this. We'll have print and multi colon, and we'll output multi. And if we save this and run the program, we see that multi is the tuple one, two, one, two, one, two, which is like first joined together three times. Now tuples have a count method, which allows us to count how many times a value occurs in the tuple. So for example, we could count how many times the value one occurs in the tuple multi. Here we could have multi and we'll call the count method and we'll pass it one. And this is going to return how many times the value one occurs in the multi tuple. We could output this with print and we'll have one count colon and we'll output the return value of calling the count method. We'll save this and run our program and we'll get a one count of three, which is correct. Now there's also an index method we can use to find the first index that a value occurs in the tuple. So for example, let's say we have a tuple called results and the results tuple is going to store the items 12, 45, 34, and 56 at the indexes zero, one, two, and three. We could find the first index where the value 34 occurs using the index method. So we could have here results.index and we'll pass it 34. And this is going to return two, the first index in the tuple where 34 occurs. We could output that with print and we'll have index colon and we'll output the return value of calling the index method. We'll save this and run our program. And we'll get that the value 34 first occurs at the index two, which is correct. 
Now, if the value can't be found in the tuple, the method is going to raise an exception. So for example, there's no value 55 in this tuple. If we pass in 55 here, and we save the program and run it, the method is going to raise an exception. We get here value error x not in tuple. We can create tuples from iterable objects like lists using the tuple function. So for example, we could have new tuple is equal to, and we'll call tuple, and we'll pass it the list containing one, two, and three. And this is going to give us back a tuple containing one, two, and three as items. We could output here new tuple to confirm this. We'll have print and new tuple. We'll save our program and run it. And we'll get here new tuple is one, two, and three. Now tuples are immutable, which means we can't change which object a tuple is storing at an index. But to get around this, what we could do is convert a tuple to a list, modify the index, and then convert the list back to a tuple. So let's go over an example of doing that. First, we'll make a tuple called values. So we'll have values is equal to, and we'll store into the tuple the items one, two, three, and four. We can convert this tuple to a list using the list function. So we could have temp underscore list is equal to, and we'll call list and we'll pass it values. And now we can actually modify which items a list stores. So we could have temp list at the index one, which is going to correspond to this item here in our tuple. And we'll assign to this index the value 500. Then we'll convert the list back to a tuple. We'll have values is equal to tuple and we'll pass it temp list. Then we'll output values with print and values. And if we save the program and run it, we'll see that the second value in the tuple is now 500. And really what's gone on is we haven't modified the tuple. We've made a new list from the tuple. We've modified the item at the second index in that list. And then we've made a new tuple from that list. So this technique is a workaround for the fact that tuples are immutable. So in terms of using tuples versus using lists, lists are more flexible in the sense that they're mutable and they can store a varying number of items, whereas tuples are immutable and they can store a fixed number of items. That can actually be a good thing though, because tuples allow us to enforce that we can't change the items and that a certain number of items should be present. Partially due to their flexibility, lists actually take up a bit more space in memory and their performance is a bit slower than tuples too. So in situations where we can use a tuple, it's probably a good idea to use a tuple. Now we can use negative indexes and slicing syntax with tuples. So if we have a tuple letters containing these strings, A and let's say B and C, and D and E and F. These strings are at the indexes zero and one and two, three, four, and five. So for example, we can use negative indexes to access tuple items. We could have here print and we'll have letters at the index negative one. And this will give us the last item in the tuple negative two will give us the second last item in the tuple. We could save this and run it. And here we'll get E. We could also use slicing syntax. So for example, we could have print and we'll have letters and we'll have one colon four. What this is going to do is give us a new tuple containing the items from the index one up until but not including the index four. So we'll have a tuple with the items B, C, and D. We could save this and run it. And we can see we have a tuple with the items B, C, and D. If we're missing the end index here, we're going to get the slice of the tuple from this index up until the end of the tuple. So we could save this and run it. 
And now we'll get the tuple B, C, D, E, F. If we're missing the start index here, then we'll get the tuple from the first index up until, but not including, the end index here. So if we save this and run it, we'll get the tuple A, B, C, D. Now we can delete a tuple object using the DEL statement. So for example, we could have here DEL letters, and this is going to delete the tuple that letters is referencing. We could try to output letters with print letters, but now we'll get an error. So if we save this and run it, now we'll get here name error, name letters is not defined. Now one thing I should make clear is that even though tuples are immutable, all that means is we can't change which objects a tuple is storing. If the object that a tuple is storing is itself mutable, like a list, then we actually can change that list. So for example, let's make a simple tuple. We'll have here, simple tuple. And this tuple is going to store a list and two int values. And what we'll do is modify that list. We'll have here, simple tuple at the index zero. So this is going to give us the list at the index zero. We'll append to that list the value 55. Then we'll output the simple tuple with print and simple tuple. If we save this and run our program, we'll find that that list has been modified. So here we'll run it and we'll get one and 55 in our list. So even though tuples themselves are immutable objects, we can modify the internal state of mutable objects that tuples store. So this is how we can use tuples in Python. Check out PortfolioCourses.com, where we'll help you build a portfolio that will impress employers.